who will be here and what does that look like? The friends, uh, three mornings ago, I woke up uh, with a message from an Israeli friend telling me about Gaza and the attack that was upon Israel. And we know how things have degenerated, unfortunately, to a full-blown war between Israeli, Hamas, and Hezbollah. Then I received a word from somebody in Naples that the Campi Flegre, which is an area near Naples, has been unusually active with earthquakes. And this area is capable of a magnitude 8 eruption. That's 4,000 times worse than Mount Helen in 1980. And then the wokeness that is in infiltrating many pulpits here, thus the doctrine is becoming corrupted as we are embracing and celebrating sin. Satan worship is more blunt than ever and is on the rise, while the church membership has dropped from 73% to 46% in the last 15 years, 50 years actually, according to a, a Gallup poll. So why am I mentioning all of this? Because we find a lot of these signs in the Olivet Discourse, which is the message that Jesus Jesus gave to his disciple on Mount Olive and is found in Matthew, in Mark, in Luke. And here basically Jesus addresses the end times and his coming back on earth, what we call eschatology. And it seems that many of these ingredients, which we also have experienced to some degree in the past, they seem to be culminating to a peak right now, especially with this latest news about the war in Israel. You know, he says in those gospels, you will hear or you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. There will be famines and earthquake. Many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. Lawlessness will be increased and the love of many will grow cold. Some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teaching of demons. So the gospel writers tell us, actually it's Jesus himself that tells us that no one knows the time. But he says to learn from the fig tree. What does it mean? Well, in that particular uh, parable, he's saying the fig tree puts out leaves in the summer. So when the leaves come out, you know the summer is close. Applying that to those signs is the application for the kingdom of God being near. But I'm not here to focus on the end times or when the church is going to be raptured. I wanted to talk about the post-tribulation period because I kind of find it fascinating the millennium, the period that represents the thousand years during which Christ comes to reign on earth with his church. Who will be here and what does that look like? Many of you have asked me this question, so here's my take on the subject, which I find fascinating like many other parts of the Word of God. So let me say right away a couple of things. First of all, we have three different groups, just like the rapture, the pre, post, and during, we have three views on millennial, and they're based on Revelation 20. So the first is a millenniums, not millennial. And basically they're saying that the millennial is a symbolic time. Basically the kingdom of God has already started when Christ came here on earth. The church is the kingdom of God, Jews and Gentile, and they believe that the saints will go through the tribulation and then Christ comes to reign forever and ever. So no rapture. The second position is post-millennialism. And those people believe that the power of the church will be greater and greater over time. And Christ will return after the millennium to establish his kingdom. Practically, the world as they see it, it's in the process of getting better and better and better. I don't think so. Then premillennialism believes that after a period of severe tribulation, the seven-year tribulation, the uh, on earth. Jesus will come visibly on earth to reign for a thousand years, thus the millennium, after which time Satan will be released once more and engage in the battle of Gog and Magog. After that, he will be cast forever into hell and then the final judgment and then the new earth. Now, premillennialism is the more prevalent view that we see. 
So what will happen exactly? According to 1 Corinthians 15, 51, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be all changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. So what do we have? We have one group that will populate the earth after the tribulation. And it's those who died and those who have been raptured. Both of them will have new immortal bodies. Sorry to break it to you though, but this group will not need to procreate because it's not going to get married just like angels. And then we read in Matthew 24, 22, and if those days had not been cut off, no human being would be saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. What does it mean? Well, if the tribulation was not limited to the seven years, the whole human race will be wiped out. And the elect are the 144,000 Jews, the 12,000 per each tribe of Israel that will come to faith. And they will be sealed and survive through the tribulation. According to Revelation 7, 3 and 4 says, Do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees until we have sealed the servants of our God and their foreheads. And I heard the numbers of the sealed, 144,000 sealed from every tribe of the sons of Israel. Thus, they too will be living here during the millennium. But they will live with natural bodies, so they will procreate, give birth and die. And then we will have also those who came to faith through the witness of of the 144,000, and also because of the rapture of the church, which probably would have left them downfunded. And he says in Revelation that is a huge multitude, Revelation 7, 9. So these two are natural men and women who will get married, will procreate, and will die. And here is the interesting point. Will the normal humans know about us, immortal, or we are to be incognito? It would be weird to kind of live in a neighborhood and see people growing up and dying while we are super fit with no wrinkles, perfect shape. Anyways, we know that the Lord will reign and since Satan is restrained during the millennium, sin will not be tolerated and actually will be judged by the Lord immediately. The word says that he will rule with a rod of iron. What will we do? I don't know exactly, but based upon the parable of the talents in Luke 19, we will have different functions in this new kingdom based on our faithfulness here now. And perhaps there will be a lot of rebuilding since the tribulation will have a devastating impact here on earth. So food for thought, I don't know if you ever thought about this or it's just me going wacko, but I would love to hear your comments, your observation. Have a fantastic weekend and I'll catch you next week. Ciao.